after the war ended in Kosovo 10 years ago, I was there and we started looking into the fate of the thousands of people who had disappeared during and after the conflict. There were Kosovo Albanians who had been killed by Serbian death squads and their bodies had been dumped in wells or buried secretly in cemeteries. Then I started investigating the other side of the war, murders and kidnappings of Serbs, allegedly by men from the Kosovo Liberation Army, that is, ethnic Albanians. In 2004, I went with a team of UN investigators who were also looking into these disappeared people. Kosovo Albanian sources have told us that operatives from the KLA had secretly transported some of these captives across the border from Kosovo to Albania. The sources had identified several locations where these captives were taken and tortured and killed. But their story didn't end there. They also told us that some of the captives, a very small number, the youngest and the fittest, were used for organ harvesting uh, before they were killed. And they had pinpointed a house in the Albanian town of Burel, that's hundreds of miles from the Kosovo border, where these atrocities allegedly happened. We went to the house to investigate, and the UN team found used medical supplies in the trash. They also found traces of, of blood stains in the living room floor. The, the evidence was intriguing, but it, it wasn't conclusive. So they sent it to the UN War Crimes Tribunal to be analyzed, but somehow that evidence was destroyed, and we never understood why. Whatever happened to that house and to all these other people who disappeared in Kosovo is still a mystery. So this spring I went back to the Balkans on assignment with the BBC. Our job was to try to find out what happened to some of these people who disappeared so many years ago. My name is Michael Montgomery and I'm in Pristina, Kosovo. And I'm working on a story about war crimes and kidnappings and all sorts of things that happened here ten years ago, uh, but it was kind of the unseen part of the war because it came after the war and it happened after NATO troops arrived and after the UN arrived and after all of us arrived, journalists and human rights workers, and it's about this group of people who were kidnapped and just vanished. Uh, these were largely Serbs from the minority and they disappeared and for ten years people have been trying to figure out what happened to them and we're trying to unravel that story and it's really hard. Today we had a lot of conversations with people we heard some amazing things but we weren't able to record any of those conversations because people are scared and they're worried about what would happen if if their stories went public with with their names and their faces and um, and that shows that even after 10 years of conflict here, even though the UN is here and NATO is here, you know, there's still a lot of fear. I think there's a lot of people here who do want those stories to come out because they feel that it's time, that Kosovo is now sort of semi-independent. Um, it's received, you know, recognition of some sort of independence from a lot of countries. And I think there are some people here who feel now it's a time for Kosovo to look at itself and some of the things that happened in what most people here think of as a war of liberation and who are still very proud of that but I think some people now recognize that every country has to look at the underbelly or its own underbelly and some of the unpleasant things that happen